So in this video, we're gonna do a couple of things. First, we're gonna start moving our JavaScript from our console that we've been using so far to do our JavaScript into our code. And then the second part is gonna be about events, which is primarily what we're gonna cover in this video. So there are a lot of browser events that happen in our browser and it could be a wide variety of things. So when the page loads, for example, that's an event. When you scroll down the page, that's an event. If you resize the browser, that's an event. But in this one, we'll be concentrating mostly on events that are more obvious. So something like clicking on a button, that would be an event. So we'll see how we can handle those events when somebody clicks on a button on our web page. So I'm gonna start by adding a new file here. I'm gonna call it events.html. In here, I'm gonna create my main HTML template by doing exclamation tab, then click inside a body, and I'm gonna start writing my HTML here. So a couple of things that I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna add a div, and in this div, we'll do a button, and button is a container type of element. We'll just say click here. That will be the text that will appear in this button. And then I'll go below this div, I'll do another div. And in this div, I'm gonna open that. I'm gonna first assign an ID to this. I'll call this app, really any ID would do. I will also assign an ID to my button, btn. So in this div, first let me try to create something. I'm gonna do another div. I'll give this a class, entry box. And in here I'll do a label. For this label, I'm gonna just ask for guest name. And next to it, we'll create an input box, which is type text. That's fine. And we'll be asking for guest's name here, basically. I'll add a placeholder here and set that to enter name. I'm gonna close this panel on the left so we can concentrate on our code. I'm gonna save this. Control S, Command S should do it. If I go back to our folder, we should have now this new file, events. If I double click on this, it should open this. Let me just zoom in so you can see what's going on. So I have this button, click here, and below it's this that says guest name and enter name. So the idea of this is gonna be that we might need to have more than one guest. So we want to have a button here that says add more guests and when our user clicks on this button, we want to generate another box that says guest name and another place where we can basically just type some text. So we don't know exactly how many guests we're gonna have, so we want our user to be able to just keep clicking and adding more guests. So I'm gonna go back here. What I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna go below this and I'm gonna add a template HTML container. And as a template, I'm pretty much just gonna copy paste this entry box, just like that. I'll give an ID to this, temp, save. So template is not an element that shows up. So if I save this, go back and reload, nothing is gonna happen. We still have this one on top because that's this. And finally, below this template, I'm gonna create a script. And what script, container allows you to do is to write your JavaScript. So anything I write within the script container is gonna be JavaScript code. So instead of our console, we're gonna write our code over here. So if you did watch my previous video about template, that will help you a lot here. If you haven't, I would suggest watching that video first. Anyhow, I'm just gonna go ahead and do a few steps here. So I'll go here and do document dot get element by ID. And the ID of that is temp, which is this ID right here. That's a template, so that should have a content property. I'm gonna save that in a variable. I'll call var temp equals this. Now I do know I could do let 
but I don't want to concentrate on variable declarations right now, so we'll just stick with var. So this will set the variable temp, which will hold the content of our template, which is pretty much going to be this part. So we want to make a copy of that. So I'm going to say var copy equals to, and then I'm going to do document import node. That's going to take that template from top and we're going to do true to make a copy of it. So now that I have that copy, I'm going to place that copy in here in this app box. So I'm going to find that box by doing document dot get element by ID. The ID of that box is app. I want to append child to that. The child is going to be the copy we've made from that template. So if I save this, I'm going to go back and reload my page and you'll see how now I have two boxes. And the reason for two is because the first one was already in here, but as our page loads, it went to the script and that script automatically ran all of these lines, which basically took the template and we end up adding a second one of these in our HTML. So if I just right click and inspect element, now let's look in our HTML, see we have the first diff, that entry box, and then we have now another entry box that has the same thing. Now one thing that's worth to note here is that the position of the script makes a difference here. So if I take this script tag, cut it, and try to, for example, put it in here on top, I'm going to save it, go back and reload. And you'll see that we don't have that second box. And if I open my console here, see, I have an error and it says the document get element by ID is null. So what this really means is that because our page loads from top down, when the page loads until here, we get to the script. And at this point, we're trying to find this element by the ID temp, but the rest of the page hasn't loaded yet. So we're trying to find this ID temp for this template, but that doesn't exist yet. So we're trying to search for it. There is nothing to find. So that's why this script gives us an error because at this point, all these elements don't exist. So that's why we're going to move this below our HTML right before the closing body tag to make sure that our elements exist. So you'll see very often that JavaScript will go to the bottom of the page just before the body closing tag. There are some ways to go around this and put it above and we'll talk about it at some point. But for now, we just want to know that that's what's going to happen. So I'm just going to put it below right before the body tag and save it. And now if I go back and reload, we should see there is no error in our console and we can see there is a second box to enter a name. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to go back to my code inside of this JavaScript. So remember everything inside of the script tag is JavaScript. I'm going to create a function. I'm going to create a function and my function is going to be add box. So the name of the function is something you choose cannot have any spaces, no special characters, cannot start with a number. The syntax to declare a function is this. You write the word function, you type the name of the function, then you open and close parentheses, and then you open and close curly brackets. So anything within this curly brackets in opening and closing belongs to this function. So right now there's nothing in this function at all. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take these lines and I'm going to move them within those curly brackets, which means I'm moving them inside of that function add box. Usually it's a good practice to hit tab here to make sure you indent this code to show that these are lines belonging to this. Although that makes 
no practical difference whatsoever. Now we have these three lines that we were doing before inside of this function add box. So if I save this, go back and reload my page, you'll see there is no second box here. And if I go to my console, there's also no errors, but the second box doesn't exist. So function is something that's not going to automatically run. So that's a set of instructions we have sitting there and waiting to be executed, but they don't get executed by themselves. So right now the page loaded, this function exists, but nothing tells it to run. So it doesn't really do these things. Now what I could do, I could go here in my console directly and run that function. So the function, if you remember, was called add box. And as you can see, as I'm typing, that shows up because it knows it exists. So I'm going to go ahead and type the rest of this. And then to execute that function, you open and close parentheses like this. And I'm going to do semicolon to end my line. Right now, if I hit enter, it will run that function. And you can see as I ran that function, it did add that on top. Now let's try to run it again. So I'm going to do the same thing, add box and see it adds it again. I go on top, hit enter. So every time I run it, it goes and repeats the same thing. It keeps adding a child element with that template inside of that same box. But we don't expect our users to go to the console and write a function like this to run something for something to happen. We want this experience where our user goes here, clicks on this click here, and that thing happens. So in this case, that thing is going to be that function that's add box. We want it to run when our user clicks on this button. So the way we do it is by using event listeners. So what I'm going to do after this function is over right here, I'm going to go to the next line here and try to go find the button, which I want to assign event listeners to. So the button is this, and it has an ID BTN. So to find that button, I'm going to go here and do document dot get element by ID and the ID of that button is BTN. So that way we can go and search and find that button element. Now to that element, I want to add an event listener. So the way you do it, you do dot and then add event listener, open parentheses. And the first argument in this is what event we want to assign this to. So the event we're going to assign this to is going to be click when somebody clicks on the button, comma. And then the second parameter after this comma is the function you want to be triggered when this event happens. So when somebody clicks on it, I want to run this function add box that we declared on top here. So I'm just going to do that same thing. I'm going to do add box and the statement with semicolon here. So what this is going to do, it's going to go find this button and to that button is going to add this event listener. And that event is going to be when somebody clicks on it, we're going to run this function add box, which is this and add box is doing these three lines. It's grabbing the template, it's copying it, and then it's adding that as a child element inside of that app div box. So with this, let's save it, go back, reload. And now if I click on click here, that function runs, click on it again, that function runs again, click on it again, that function will run again. So now we're assigning an event to our button. And by the way, that doesn't have to be a button. So really we can assign events to any element right now. It's a button, but I could just change that button to H1. And like I said, in JavaScript, we don't really care what this elements are. We mostly just care about that. It's an element or it's a container or it's a not a container. In this case, it's just an element. And to that element, I will find that element using the ID again, and then I assign the event. So I'm just going to do this H1. Go back and reload. So now you'll see it's not a button, it's an H1. And if I click on that, it still does the same thing. So it doesn't have to be button. You can assign that event to anything. 
but usually you assign it to like a button because it makes, I guess, more sense, which is what I'm going to do. I'm going to change this back to a button. So another thing to remember is that there are a lot of different events you can assign functions to. So in this case, we're assigning to click event. Now, instead of click, you could do something like DBL click, that's double click event. So if I save this and go back and reload, you'll see we have a button on top. And if I click on this button, nothing happens. I click on it again, nothing happens. But if I double click on it, something happens. So now I assign that function to a double click event instead of click event. And there are tons of different events you can assign. So for example, you can do mouse over. So that means when I roll the mouse over that button, I want that event to be triggered. So I don't even have to click now. So if I save this, go back and reload. So right now, let's take a look. See, I'm going to just go here very carefully. I'm not going to click on anything and just roll over this. And there it is. It adds it. So now I don't click on it. The event is when I roll the mouse over and it triggers the function every time I do that. And it adds new boxes. Now, we're probably not going to do that. We're just going to do click. But the point is there are different events you can use. It's not just click event. I'm going to also change the button text. Instead of click here, I'm going to say add guest. Save it. We can also assign different functions to different events. I could have one function on click event and I could have a different function on double click event. So let me show you an example of that. So if you wanted to do that, you would have to have another function and give it a different name. You cannot repeat the same name for your functions. So let's see, what do we want to happen? So right now I'm going to reload this. When we click, it adds a name. And when we double click on it, I suppose we'll just clear all of them. If you double click on a button, all of these will just disappear. So I'll do that. So I'm just going to say clear boxes. It's just an arbitrary name. So usually you would come up with something better than what I do right now. And to do this, I will have to just find. So the boxes I'm clearing is all the boxes inside of this div app. And I will just remove everything in it. So I'll just clear the box. So I'll just find that div in this function by using document dot get element by ID and the ID is app. And I'm going to take that and set the inner HTML of that to nothing. So that will just remove all the boxes. Now this is not going to do anything because nothing tells this function to run until we assign it to something. And that I'm going to do here outside of that function. I'm going to do document dot get element by ID. The ID is going to be BTN for that button and to that button, we're going to add event listener again, only this time, instead of click event, we'll do DBL click for double click. And when we double click, we want to run this new function that we just called clear boxes, save that. So now we should have one event for click one event for double click two different functions. Let's save this and go back and reload and see what happens. If I click add guest, it adds another one. I click again, it adds another one. Now, if I double click, we get rid of all of them. And as you can see during that double click, uh, the first click adds another guest. Now, if I click again, it shows up double click. It's going to first with the first click, it's going to add the first one, but then it's going to remove both of them. But the point is we can just assign different events. Hopefully that gives you an idea how this works. And that should do it for this video. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.